Talking Sex Live is recorded in front of a live audience. This show is for mature listeners only. Hello, you're Talking Sex Live with Chet and Diane. I'm Diane. And I am Chet, and we are unlicensed sex therapists. We are a very knowledgeable sexual couple providing sex education for the world. Uh, people who are watching right now, we want to educate them for uh, relationship and sexual health. Uh, just based off of our experience, we haven't gone to any type of schooling for this. Uh, and we, we're here to, to share our knowledge with everybody. So uh, we have our producer online today. Uh, also, we are streaming right now for Twitch and recording for podcasts as well as YouTube. So if you are watching this, give it a like or give us a follow, whatever platform you're on right now. Uh, we have our producer. Uh, we're going to introduce him first because we have a very special guest today. How are you doing today, Wells? I'm well. How are you, Chet and Diane? Uh, we, we are, are well. fantastic. Mm-hmm. In honor of our special guests from Australia, mm-hmm. I actually have some Australian sex facts. Okay, oh. great. What are those facts? So women actually report having more sex than men. They all re- also report being more satisfied. We have 93.9% of women satisfied versus 87% of men also over half of australian women say they have sex at least once a week but just 43 percent of that to men not surprisingly men have slightly uh, more promiscuous attitudes 17.5 percent said that it's likely that they'll have sex on the first date versus women at only 9.8 percent and lastly um chlamydia is the most common that's right sti to get contracted there 51.6 percent except in the case of younger australians where it is herpes overall oh and most surprisingly more than half of australians admitted to rarely or never using any form of contraception when having sex overall they have a much less puritan attitude of sex than americans wow mm. well let's cut over to our our sex experts here from australia welcome to the show heathen down under we have gretchen and heath uh they have a podcast that they do uh they talk about australia and also sex and culture how are you guys doing tonight good, good. that's Thank good you. good pleasure yeah. to be here Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks for the invite. And thank you for the information. That was very... Uh, yeah, epic. quite enlightening. Of course. Yeah, if you've listened to their show, they actually uh, they talk about the the chlamydia outbreak there. Is that correct? I've listened to that, right? Oh, yeah, yes. Yes, we do touch on, on, on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, um, Melbourne yeah. was on fire at one point. We had uh, a bit right. of, of an issue in Victoria around. for a minute. Right. Oh, yeah, so syphilis is also another problem, apparently. Yeah, what? syphilis is raging as well. So yeah. if you're oh. going down those parts, careful. So, <laughs> so wait, you were you were close to the fires, and also chlamydia was raging at the same time as the fires. It was like a fire down yeah, under mate, and a fire Australia. down under. Yeah, 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 yeah. That welcome to Australia. It's um, all guns blazing. Wow. Oh, wow. So yeah. I really yeah, enjoy right. your name, Heathen Down Under, because mm-hmm. it's Heath and Gretchen. It's that's a it's a great uh, double entendre, oh, I yes. guess you want to call it. Uh, Thank, you. It Thank you. Not everyone gets the gag. I I, I didn't know it until I actually uh, learned your names, and I was like, yes, that is the perfect name for your podcast. There, Gretchen and Heath, and Heath and Gretchen, Heathen, and then what you talk about is basically uh just sexual endeavors in australia and so heathen down under it just seems like it's perfect so mm-hmm. cheers for that yeah thank you thank you very much appreciate that and so, as a reference to oh sorry no go ahead um <laughs> i was just gonna say in terms of wells because uh, i i hailed from new york city but i've been living in australia now for about 12 years wow. altogether. And I definitely came here because they have more sex. Nice. So that, was really, that was accurate research that wow. that was found. I, yeah. And we have a lot of sex in New York City. I mean, you I'm sure you've been there and can imagine that goes on. But um, Australia, I have found, is is quite um, a sexual nation, mm. if so you will. How, how does it actually how, uh, 
I mean, you've been in Australia, uh, you've been in New York. I don't know if you lived anywhere else in the U.S., but how would you feel the, the sexual culture is in Australia? Uh, you're in, in Queensland, is that correct? Or what's the city that you're in? Yeah, we're in the state of Queensland at the moment. Yeah, yeah. on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. But you're yeah, like right on the beach, basically? or Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Most of Australia is right on the beach. So <laughs> do you feel that people are more sex positive? They're more sexually open about uh, sex there? Positive or? and open, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. A little bit lazy. Lazy? Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's that's a pretty across the board thing in the nation. Yeah, lazy in terms of sex, like going down on each other. Or, or yeah, just like lazy, just, like because uh, I've been to be go about finding it. Oh, yeah. about finding sex. So, oh, so okay. what do you so what do you do to find sex? in if you're a single person in Australia, depending on where you are, mm -hmm. honestly, because there's a lot of populated areas mm -hmm. in Australia. So most of the time, that's you just true. find yourself at the pub. Yeah, you just basically hook up from bars and whatnot and just one night stands, yeah, yeah, go yeah, home yeah. with people. I hope you leave before the lights go on. That's um that's pretty much it. I mean <laughs> that is a thing in of course in the US. Yeah, it's but not much different. Not there. much different. Mm. But I, I guess I think with the whole I don't know, what do you think about this, Wells? Uh you've had more experience being single in the uh in the US here. what's your experience going home with people from bars? Um, well, of course, with COVID. Mm -hmm. Oh, before doesn't. COVID, before of course. COVID. We, we, we're yeah. all living in a fantasy world where COVID doesn't exist I, right now. So. <laughs> yeah, it's all just. Yeah. <laughs> I myself have never done that. you never done I don't that? Have, Interesting. I don't have those statistics in mm -hmm. front of me. Mm -hmm. I've done it a, a couple times. Diane, you've done it with some females. Only women. Only women, not with men. No. Uh, we Later we actually often. met in a bar, uh, but at a, at a theater, but we didn't really... I, I I didn't ask her home. I it's a true story. I I was drinking and so I didn't drive and I I was taking a train home and she drove and I was just like I'm taking her train home and she was just like so what and that was it and then uh, later I asked her out on a date mm -hmm. and we went out on a date and then she was actually good. We we she spent the night but we didn't have sex. Nope. And I guess uh, I farted in my sleep. Yeah, she did fart in her sleep, <laughs> uh, which is great. Uh, I knew she was a keeper, and I think it was the next date when we had sex. We were supposed to go karaokeing, and I was cooked it her the dinner. Next date? No way, I waited. Made you wait for a while. I made we wait for another uh, two nights, maybe. I think it was. I, I feel like it was within mm. three weeks because Wells yeah, met you, right. and Wells was like, "Wait a second, are you are you boning Diane?" And I'm like, "Yep." And so I was like, "You just met her." That's that sort right. of thing. Yes, there was palpable sexual tension yes. between two of them yes it was yes. pretty hot Very but so. romantic how did you guys meet by the way uh we were that bumble life and tinder, tinder life oh, yeah, tinder yeah. bumble yeah that's a good we one actually on both he was the only person that i've matched on both platforms oh wow with. so you oh, met him on tinder and exciting. bumble wow yes yeah. mm -hmm. yep but then he made me wait because my internet i'm really just in it predominantly to have sex i'm not trying to text you or be friendly or mm -hmm. chit chat you just want to so, meet up and shag right yeah well yeah, yeah i just want to get to the to the point mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he made me wait a couple of days until we did go to the pub australia mm -hmm. lo and behold mm -hmm. down to the tav yep definitely had sex. actually i was only wearing a towel when i answered the door oh. for our date mm -hmm. wow and so she, she, she showed up and you had a towel yeah, on. That's, that's, um, that's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. I was sort of running through my living room in a towel. Did at you that did you just disrobe and you were naked and then Not you started yet. going at it, or did you actually put clothes on and go out on a date? Yeah, no, I put some clothes on to get mm -hmm. some drinks bought for me, you know, and make sure mm -hmm. he was a gentleman and gonna pay for my dinner. Okay. <laughs> so that was the those were the first how it started, but. Yeah, yeah. We definitely had sex after. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was kind of, he woke up in my bed the next day, mm -hmm. which was curious because I find that in New York, when I have sex with people immediately, they, they don't spend the night. Yeah, yeah they have. No, that's what I do. I da leave. Dan left. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> I'd leave. When she slept and I woke up and was like, huh, now I know how that feels when ladies leave, uh, when, when a man leaves a woman. And so, like, uh, yeah, so. Not nice. It's yeah, not nice. It's not a good feeling, but you know, at the same time, you're just like, 
<sighs> that was nice, but uh, I would like to see her again. But oh, I was going to cook her yeah, breakfast yeah, yeah. and stuff. You know, it's like. I think I got insomnia. I got to go. Yeah. And I'm out. <laughs> exactly. I'm out. Uh, yeah. I had a problem because I had a really nice apartment in Hell's Kitchen. So they mm-hmm. were always coming to my place and mm-hmm. then they didn't want to leave. Oh. So there was a couple terse conversations where I kind of had to say, get out. I think it's time for you to, wow. you know. I, I just yeah. picture uh, Daredevil, uh, oh, the yeah. Netflix show, in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> I don't, I'm sure it's not the same. I just picture that your apartment had a large neon light showing inside of your apartment. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's, yeah. That's it. That's that's it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the one. That's yeah, it. I had yeah. to stand out from yeah. Times Fire Square. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you're yeah. fighting Kingpin and, and having sex King with Electra. Did <laughs> yeah. you say Kingpin? <laughs> no, Kingpin, yes. Kingpin, the kinky uh, <laughs> drug overlord. <laughs> that controlled all the kink in the area there uh oh ninth avenue is a crazy place yeah, yeah. i've that's, we've that's actually never been to new york no. uh i always well, wanted to go yeah wells i mean it, we're west coast people mm-hmm. and it's just like i don't know if you are aware but usually if you kind of stick to one coast i, I mean I, i've been I could to, be by coastal i, be, I yeah, think yeah, i think i could be in uh, new york uh wells yeah. what about you have you been to new york at all I have been to New York, yeah. and not only is it the city that never sleeps, mm-hmm. it's the city that always fucks mm-hmm. on average. Mm-hmm. It's showing. New, York, <laughs> New Yorkers report having sex 156 times a year. They are also second in all major cities to only Atlanta. Atlanta has 25. That's the average number of sexual partners people have during their lifetime. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. ATL, baby. Yeah, yeah. not so much in mm. LA. I don't know. It's LA is different. It's so big here. It's just, Everyone's so beautiful. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, super right. hot. And everybody favorite. has like every, it's just like a caste system. You know, if like you're not as beautiful as me, I'm not going to have sex with you. And so it's just like this weird it depends game. Depends on the personality, yeah. though. It does. Because that can be very sexy. And if they're confident Ooh, it doesn't yeah. matter yeah i mean <laughs> that's how i landed diana i guess so uh, i think i was helping out an older gentleman uh, i was if he was a good friend of mine i think that's what landed diane for me so he was doing his laundry i was doing an old man's him laundry and drove him to theater shows <laughs> like, oh, okay but he was he was my best friend for a while until he passed away uh rest in peace herb uh anyway yeah, very funny man very funny man but uh, i always go to the bathroom when the check came cause oh like, yeah chet's paying and yeah. i'm going to the bathroom I'm going to the bathroom like thanks her <laughs> thanks a lot but um so do you feel that uh, the sexual culture in new york is any different from australia than I feel the sexual culture in New York City, which mm. is an important, you know, shout mm-hmm. out my my northern people, but mm-hmm. it's kind of just that sort of tri-state vibe going on. Mm-hmm. I've only lived there going mm-hmm. in the state. So I'm, I'm like like yourself, but I'm just East Coast. I never mm-hmm. lived out West or not, didn't matter. So I don't think that the rest of the US is like New York from what I've heard, mm-hmm. but I definitely agree with Wells in the context of everybody's just having sex all the time Mm -hmm. i put it down to transport i think because los angeles it's bit you have to drive more i mean there's ubers now but you know historically that was a little bit trickier to get around to get your rocks off Mm -hmm. but we've got the whole yellow cab and yeah yeah Mm -hmm. it's very walkable so i think that might be why we have more sex that makes sense australia on the other hand not walkable Mm. so yeah you're more Mm -hmm. likely to get into a monogamous relationship over here mm-hmm. partially because that's the culture we actually read a survey earlier that said 95 percent of australians want to be which is different from new york where everyone's poly or yeah you know what i'm saying it's like swing so off, wait, wait, wait. everyone's poly in new york <laughs> like, <laughs> about, wow. i think so yeah oh. i mean from what i saw they i mean mm-hmm. i lived there for eight years and was never in a monogamous relationship wow. so maybe it was just the circles that i was rocking in but um I find over here it's a uh, hardcore relationship sex. Wow, mm. well, that's great. I mean, that's well, nice. that's that's what we're doing, mm-hmm. except for when we go ahead and pull in a female for uh, for a threesome or uh, two females for a foursome. But that's all for Diane, basically. But uh, yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so when you guys uh, met. How long was it before you actually got in a relationship? Uh, I, I was pretty much done. 
Yeah. You found the one? You were just like, this is the one right here. That was it, yeah. Wow. Since we've known each other, we spent two nights apart. Wow. And this has just been like the last year, right? Like, Yeah, so we met February 10th of 2021. Basically soulmates uh, right now, right? Yeah, yeah, like the uh, the the Tinder GPS was real. He was actually over my back fence, curiously. Oh, wow, like stalking you, or <laughs> like just peering <laughs> over and Not looking yet, over? Yeah, because I had just moved there, so okay. I left New York and was roaming around Australia. Mm-hmm. And I went to this place called Yamba, which is a pretty lousy place. Yeah. I found out, but I basically started having amazing sex with Heath, and mm-hmm. then we left. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we left moved in together. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Uh, yeah. So if if you are watching right now, if you have any questions for us, go ahead and put it in the chat. We will get to them eventually. Uh, maybe towards the end of the show or between callers. We do have some callers coming in on the old reader board. Is that correct, Wells? I actually don't have access to the reader board. Oh, right that now. is oh. correct. I did not give you access to that. But um, before we get into callers, I do want to ask uh, Gretchen. So you, we were mentioning this before we started the show. You have actually uh, had some type of sexual experiences in other countries. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, what what other countries have you uh, been? In that sexually you, active in yeah. mainly Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, I have had sex on some South Pacific islands as mm-hmm. well, but I feel like in the name of just keeping it very multicultural, France, Italy, mm-hmm. and Germany were the three places that I've had in some sex. places that we oh in Spain really <laughs> wanted to travel to. So, what's what's the sexual culture in these uh, uh, cities? It's just like just. People. Italy is Liddy. Everything that you've heard about. I noticed in the rags this year that oh. all the celebrities are going to have sex in Italy. And really? I don't blame because, mm. uh, yeah, that's a hot, sexy place. Mm. I feel like everyone is kind of all over each other everywhere. For real, for real. Really? Like the EDA is not even a, like, nobody would even, they'd be like, what do you mean? I'm just having sex with my boyfriend or <laughs> licking this person's face. Mm. Like, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And so that was probably my favorite sexual sescapades that I had in wow. sescapades that I had in do, Europe. Do you feel that um, they're better lovers or is they just there's more uh, sex positive, more open to having sex? I think they're a bit more sex positive mm. and open. Mm-hmm. I think that the Italian men are oh, very yeah. Mm-hmm. sort of, yeah, they're ready. They're there for it. It's all true. Mm-hmm. Like when I had an uh, Italian lover at the time in New York who I would travel to Italy with. Um, and then we were just really fully surrounded by this entire vibe, which you see in movies, you don't know if it's real or not, but yeah, yeah it was definitely, um, everybody was all over each other. It was kind of hot. Wow. So I think that the guys there are just a bit more forward about, mm-hmm. about what's going on. Yeah. In a, in a, in a sexy though, romantic, nice way, yeah. not mm-hmm. in just the like, you know, holla at you off the block kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they, 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 yeah. they treat you yeah. right. They're not mm-hmm. just like a bunch of scrubs calling from a car yeah. with your best and I friend found they're hot and artsy and mm-hmm. it's like a different kind of style of of man that mm-hmm. i wasn't really used to seeing in the streets of new york mm-hmm. but i mean but don't get me wrong there's some sex there's many sexy gentlemen that are mm-hmm. and ladies obviously mm-hmm. on those streets so. and so yeah. heath have you been international or is it just uh just no, straight up not. you have not been international and you're just all straight up australia right yeah, you sound very Australian, and uh, it, yeah, no, very it's much. a it's a very sexy mm-hmm. accent, uh, man. Very sexy. Uh, mm-hmm. Diane's, um, yeah, she's got her rocks off right now. So, oh yeah, love <laughs> Australians. Yes, yes mm-hmm. she loves the Australians. Margot yeah. Robbie, oh, yeah. Hemsworth really Brothers. Mind. Yep, yep. So Hugh just, Jackman, Hugh Jackman, mm-hmm. Nicole Kidman, Nicole Kidman. Uh, Hugh Jackman's a pussy. Ross, oh really? oh really? In real life, like he's he's not an Australian. No, they're oh. just like he, he. I guess he's got a thick burrito. You go and ask a farmer about Hugh Jackman. Mm. What, what, what was that about Hugh Jackman? Ask a farmer about Hugh Jackman. Oh, wait. Oh. A, ask a farmer about Hugh Jackman. Like any farmer in Australia, oh, and they'll tell these. you how big of a pussy he is. Yep. Well, oh wow. Oh well, I'll take either or. Yeah. 
I wanna, I wanna hear this. Yeah, I, I'm really curious well, about he's... why he's a pussy. If uh, if you ask a farmer, I'm just like this is like such a random like. Uh, type well, he's of... never done a day of hard work in his life. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's but he's on the yeah, Greatest yeah. Showman. I mean, he can sing somewhat. We we saw him live at the Hollywood Bowl, and he really does not have a good voice. But you know, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good performer he's a good performer right. but like yeah. his voice is just like he's a lot forced. more famous overseas than he is here ah oh, um, that makes sense yeah is yeah, guy like pierce a farmer more famous in australia guy pierce? guy pierce is guy pierce more famous uh, over there he's, oh if he wasn't a wanker yeah <laughs> he's also so he just all masturbates the... <laughs> all the time sure okay <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, no, if he wasn't a douche. Oh, yeah. okay, douche? got it, got it. Oh. What about Russell Crowe? Do you guys like Russell Crowe? Or is it who? We love Rusty. Okay, so we he's a national Rusty. treasure, even though yeah. he's like 800 pounds right now. He's is it because bad. he fights? Is it because he fights people? Fights everybody? No, no, it doesn't even matter that he's a Kiwi either. But um, Oh, wait, yeah, no. so he's he's from New Zealand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did yeah. not know that. All my dreams are shattered. Yeah, it's just like, cause, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. A very uh, different accent, really. <laughs> oh, we did not know that. We're just very ignorant wow. uh, American people that we didn't know that are uh, actually, <laughs> that there's a, I mean, we know there's a difference, but like, uh, I, I mean, we can't spot a uh, Australian accent from a New Zealand accent mm -hmm. to a South Amer uh, African accent. Um to a, I, I, I mean, we can we can pinpoint a Scottish and an Irish and an, in like a w Welsh in London, but yeah, as it comes to the other British colonies, it's just like mm, sure, it's all the other ones. So just know. get him to say certain words like <laughs> fish. Mm. Oh really? Oh. How, how does how does us, uh, Russell Crowe say fish? Fish. Mm. Oh. I would not be able mm. to pinpoint that mm. at all. So <laughs> not at all. Mm -mm. So, uh, Wells, uh, do we have any callers coming in right now? Well, it just so happens we have one of our favorite callers, Danny Bananas. Danny oh, Bananas. I love him so much. Go ahead. Do us about bronies. Bronies? Brownies. Bronies. 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 Uh, hello, you're talking sex live with Chet and Diane. I am Chet. I'm Diane. Is this Danny Bananas? Yeah. You know it is. <laughs> How are you, Chet? How are you, Diane? Oh, God. Oh, Happy well. New Year, Happy friend. New Year. We missed you so Happy much. Um, we did to talk to you again. We played a clip on the, or we played a still photo from our last show where we had our sex toy that you made of Diane, a sex uh -huh. robot. Uh, it was from the show. I don't know if you remember this, but it yeah. was her and me and then your sex robot, mm -hmm. and it was right. great. Um, and yes. how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Thanks for bringing that up. That was a strange time in my life. Yes. Sure. Yes. I think I got a little bit over uh, over uh, aggressive with uh, with how many dolls I was making. Oh, okay. So I've moved on. Yeah, we I've moved on. We had a lot of sex with that robot, and it broke. Yes. Um, I, I don't want to ah, yeah. tell you about the quality of it. Um, it looked exactly like Diane, and it was fantastic. We had a mm -hmm. good time, yeah. uh, but it did break. So it's just like, oh, yeah, that's but, unfortunate. But, I owe you. We we do. I, I wanted to let you know we have some people here from Australia that are oh. are joining us. Mm. It is exotic Heath and Gretchen. Uh, they are on a podcast called Heathen Down Under. They're joining us right now. Uh, you have a question about bronies, which it, for those who are listening right now, those are bros who like My Little Pony. Is that correct? That's right. That's that's correct. That is something I would have liked to have known before going to my first brony convention. Okay. Yes. I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into, but I just knew it had something to do with horses. Okay. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, so wait, you went to a brony convention. I'm assuming this is yes. in Las Vegas. And what... Yes. What happened there? Like, we were just like, you just decided to show up and you were just confused? Or what was going on? Well, no, I uh, I, I knew it had something to do with horses. So uh, I dressed myself up as my favorite cinematic horse, Artex. Okay, from, from story. Yes, Never Ending Story, who died in the, yes. uh, the Swamp of Sadness. 
Um, That's right. And there was I a forgot about that too. Yes, chip. yes. There was a there's a rumor that the the horse actually died, but he did not. Uh, yeah. That was just a rumor. Right. So if if you mm. were worried about that, don't worry. Uh, but anyways, what were you saying about the Artax there? Well, I went dressed as Artax, hoping that somebody would be there to pull me out of their own swamp of sadness. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, what ended up happening is I just brought down the entire room of bronies. And I guess what my question is, is if you're going into a sexual experience and you make a faux pas that really brings down the room and reminds everyone of death of maybe a lovable horse or something from their childhood or a Mm -hmm. family member, Mm -hmm. how do you bring it back up so you can still get sprung and have a squirt? Okay. Um, uh, changing the subject always works for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, I guess if if you are in the like you're in the moment with somebody, mm-hmm. um, mm. like Diane and I today, it is it's Martin Luther King weekend here in the U.S. Yes, and so oh. we wanted to celebrate with a actual like Thanksgiving like turkey dinner, and so mm-hmm. we made this great. Mm meal before we did this show Mm -hmm. uh Mm. and while we were making this meal it was all to honor uh dr martin luther king jr while we were making this meal we couldn't keep our hands off each other and so it's all about switching it up you know like if you're into somebody and you really like like that person and Mm. you think they're sexy it doesn't matter what's thrown at you. You can just get into it. Um, yes. Okay. So well, I, may, maybe what you just said right there might be the solution. Cause uh, I got to tell you something. I don't find any meal of the year more sexual than that. of Thanksgiving oh, yeah. dinner. Mm-hmm. Just looking at that Turkey all basted and brined mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. on a plate, lying down all one cavity open. Mm-hmm. I can't help myself, but think about having sex. Yeah. It, there is something, Super sexy about a mm. uh, female in the kitchen. I, it sounds like I, I'm going to stop myself before I even say it. Uh, it uh, yeah. <laughs> having a woman yeah. cook, like mm-hmm. it's just like you helped it, with the mashed potatoes. I did. I helped with a lot. Uh, That's I, about it. Yeah, mashed yeah. potatoes. <laughs> I, I do make some mean mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. So, but I, right. I mean, just being in the kitchen with a partner, it really turns me on. It turns Diane on. Mm-hmm. We we have uh, mm-hmm. a lot of coitus in the kitchen. It's a great place to do it. Um, so, yeah. This is this is a very strange. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say strange. It's just a, a very mm-hmm. unique mm-hmm. question. Um, mm-hmm. Heath and Gretchen, do you have mm-hmm. any advice for Mister Danny Bananas? Like, if you were to remind somebody that is your sexual partner or soon-to-be sexual partner about one of the most traumatic uh, movie moments of their childhood, how do you bring it back up so that way you can still have a little romp around the sheets? I think, really, you've just got to focus on the positives of the message there. Ah. I'm I'm sure there was a really positive message to any story that that involves it. did you guys Love see Neverending Story? That was one of my favorite movies as a child. Yes. I, I think that as somebody who could be quite short spoken sometimes, if mm-hmm. the other person I was trying to have sex with was mortally offended, I might just throw in a psych. Like just kidding. Oh. And kind <laughs> psych. of yeah. Yeah. Take a, yeah. a take a Diane approach and just yeah. change the subject. And if mm-hmm. there's a kitchen around, ah. by all means. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, that's good advice. That's solid advice. And I would say the main message behind the never-ending story is use your imagination. So maybe the next time, if I mess somebody up by bringing uh, a tearjerker out there, I'll just tell them, hey, use your imagination and imagine me behind you boning. And then that might get us back in the mood to actual gaily get behind each other and bone. So I think that's a pretty safe decision. Have you, Have right. did you, did you, were you able to find anybody actually at this, at this convention? convention? No, it was absolutely crazy. Everybody was dressed up like My Little Ponies, and I had no fucking idea what the hell was going on. Did you think it was? Some... I'm into horseplay, not uh... pony play. Like horseplay as it being like like horseplay, like roughhousing. Is no, that what you're saying? Yeah. Ho- no, no, no. Like horseplay. Put hooves on my two hands. Mm-hmm. Put Got... a rein around my neck and. Ca- 
make me it's make me uh, make me giddy up around the yard. So you're more of a that's uh, it's, it's, it's classified play, as a saddle f- play furry. Yeah. It's classified yeah. as a furry. So th- isn't no, not different. a furry. Furry's no different. costume. I'm saying put literal put horseshoes on me. Put a bit in my mouth. Make Whoa. me eat out of a trough. Slap my ass and get me galloping, baby. Wow. Okay. So you you showed up to this bronies convention expecting to yeah. be more horseplay, and it actually yeah. turned out to be everyone was into like very. It was it's bronies like My Little Pony, very. Yeah. Yes. Pink and purple rainbows. and Pink, rainbow. purple rainbows. Yeah, yeah. And very unicorn shit. Intended for two to eleven year old girls, basically. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. bronies, they're males who typically identify to enjoy this type of activity. Mm-hmm. And you expected that it would be more horseplay. And so, yeah. did you leave, or what happened after that? Yeah, I came in dressed like Artex. Everybody will remember the Swamp Assassin. Yes. All those little, they, they, they all started crying. I felt bad. They felt bad. So I just sad. I did a sad jerk off. Oh, like, you just jerked off. You just pulled out your penis and yeah. started masturbating. Yeah, I did it in the corner, Blair Witch style. Okay. Oh. So Blair Witch style, meaning that you had a, a yeah. cell phone or a camera that was just No, on? it was turned into the corner away from everybody. Oh, my God. back turned. Got it. So, yeah. did um, I, for our tax, uh, were you yeah. dressed as a Treyu? Like, with. No, I was dressed as Artex the horse. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, you would ride me out of the swamp of shed. So, you. Okay. You were hoping to have someone dressed as a Treyu. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Um,. Yeah. I, as a child, I had the hots for the child like Empress. She, I. Oh, yeah. I mean. Oh, yeah. Saying that now she's attractive is really creepy, but I was a you child. Said, no, you can't say that. No, no, not at all. I always liked older men when I was a kid. Really? What, Harrison what? Ford. Hey. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, Jones. You know, I'm an older man, Diane. Oh. There you go. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe you've sent yeah. us lots of sex toys, yeah. and we've uh, mm-hmm. take the next step to actually have uh, you know Danny Bananas over here. LA is a very short drive from Las Vegas. Hey, yep, I got a hybrid. <laughs> it's got lots of range and mileage on it. Yep, I'll uh, get there in one tank of gas. You bet. No problem. Uh, hey. So Heath and Gretchen, do you? Mm. What would you tell Danny Bananas if he was to go to another convention and he, like would you tell him that he needs to actually like experience that the um the the cosplay of the convention or just stick with his uh his notion of being uh Artax I think stick with it and start your own convention. There you go. I I really do. Wow. I think there'll be a lot more um, fellow Mm -hmm. R-Track-ians that want to get in on it. r track There you go. Yeah, yeah, Uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's a term. Yeah. All right. I think that I would actually advise a different route and say maybe skip the convention and just find the after party. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot right. of those going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be a little bit more accepting when Ars Text walks in and you won't be as judged uh, as perhaps yeah. a daytime, you know, get it's, together. It's a little forward thinking. Man. Solid advice all around. It's it's definitely a downer to have a, a horse that died at a convention yeah, that praises a horses. <laughs> it's a little difficult. Oh, please. I once went to a furry con, uh, concert mm-hmm. dressed as Harambe, and everything was fine. Okay, I, I don't, don't know who that is. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. No, who's Harambe? You don't know Harambe? Mm-hmm. No, who's Harambe? <laughs> Harambe is the gorilla that they had a shot when <laughs> they shot a gorilla when the guy fell in there, and the gorilla. Left. Oh, the gorilla know, where the Harambe. kid dropped yeah. into the yeah. uh, the, the gorilla the thing and they had pin. To kill the gorilla. Like in Cincinnati or something like that, and they had to shoot yeah. the gorilla instead of just yeah. Uh, yeah. 
That was oh. super sick. Well, I'll tell you, when I went to the party dressed as Harambe, I got shot, but not with bullets. Okay. Mm. What were you shot with there, Danny? But I think we all know what he was uh, shot, shot with. I think we all know yeah. what I got shot mm. with, did, Chet. Come on. Did, did, did you swing the other way and get shot? I swing every way, baby. Oh, mm. very nice. Well, and after my uh, own heart. Maybe we should nice. have you down uh have me over we will we'll, we'll reach out to you uh if anybody ever has any questions please email talking sex live at gmail including you danny Ma- uh, bananas hey thanks thanks yeah. so much no problem i hope you have a good night please uh stay safe out there in las vegas and stay sex positive right. my friend have a good all night. all right hi danny you too you too thank you bye-bye bye-bye um Man, oh man, thank you so much for your guidance there, uh, Heath and Gretchen. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's always a fun time when Danny Bananas calls in because his calls are just bananas. So it's it's a very... That sounded like he was in a real predicament, you know? Yeah. uh, Yeah, I'm glad we could help. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, we're happy It's difficult when you have to deal with death, especially in some type of scenario that involves a conference where everybody enjoys that type of personality or persona or activity and and then you're just showing up as something that has to do with death with that it's just but uh i did always loved always always loved uh never ending story growing up it's a Mm -hmm. good movie uh you've seen it right dan you showed me it a few months ago yeah yeah it's uh doesn't really hold up now, but uh, whatever. There was a, a sequel. Kind of disappointed by that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, there was a sequel with uh, Jonathan Brandis as Bastion, as an older Bastion, and which one's uh, Bastion again? Bastion is the child who discovers the actual the book, book okay. of uh, the Neverending Story, which writes itself as mm. you read it. It's the whole concept is just mind boggling. There's a point in that movie that gives me chills where the child life empress looks at the camera and says like something about like you are are the one who's viewing this. And it, 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 it's very quick and very brief. And it just like just like she breaks the fourth wall and states that. Like, this is not a movie anymore. You're the ones who are writing the story. She looks directly at the camera and tells you that you are the one writing the story. And it's just like, like I'm having chills right now just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole say my name moment. Yeah, say my name. And then he and Bastion says the name. And it's like, and nobody can understand it. But the actual name is Moonchild. (laughs) It's Moonchild. The Bastion's uh mother's name was Moonchild, so hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, they, they serve you a lot at the end. It's a heavy uh, dose at the never ending end of very, the never ending story. They very have to tie heavy. Uh and also the writer director of that movie is German and I hear the German score is just fantastic. Like the musical score, but then they put all the synth uh type of uh music on top of it to uh, it was really weird like they they filmed it in english but then they dubbed it in german and then they put the german with like uh some type of uh different music and then they for the english version they synthesized it it was weird but anyways we're gonna move on to another caller because that's what we do here at talking sex live we chat with people uh Wells, who do we got calling in? We have Brad. He has been accused by ex-girlfriends of fetishizing them because they're not white. Oh, wow. Okay. Hello, you're hmm. talking sex live with Chet and Diane. I am Chet. I'm Diane. And is this Brad? Yeah. Yeah, this is Brad. Okay. Oh, can you, so you can have, hear me? Yeah, I can okay. hear you just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you oh, have a okay, very, okay. very heavy topic to talk about right now. So you, you have a, uh, so go ahead and explain yourself, my friend. 
Oh, okay. Uh, well, so I, I recently got out of a relationship. Uh, it, it, we we parted uh, unamicably, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a, it was a, it was rough because uh, I thought we were getting into a better place, and uh, my my ex girlfriend and I were starting to talk about more what we liked sexually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I decided to show her what kind of porn I like to look at. Okay. What kind of porn and, is that? Uh, uh, well, I, I guess it's a... Uh, well, she noticed in my, my pattern of searching that I uh, I tend to look for a lot of, uh, of ethnic porn. Okay. I guess white, white male and... Uh, so, so Asian or Latina female. So you're a white male, is that what you said? And then you look for Asian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or Latina. Or, or I mean, I didn't think it was one thing. I thought it was a range of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but this is, a, this is what she had pointed out to me. And, and, and she didn't like what I was asking her to do, which were my fantasies. Okay. Uh, and, and, uh, she, you know, she, I, I, I think she took it the wrong way. You so, know, I, I, I really do. She, she thought that because I was searching for a lot of, uh, made videos and masseuse videos and, uh, and that's pretty much all I like. So, so uh, she, she this, really didn't. you were looking for more. Like you, you, you look, you are attracted to more Asians. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I guess more, but yeah, occasionally I like to look at Latina porn. Okay, I, so Asian and, and Latina. And some, some beautiful black women. I, I, but like, I didn't think it was one thing. But she, you know, she really focused in on that. It was a, it was, it was more of a, a, a power thing, I guess, mm-hmm. and. I don't. I I really don't feel that. But I'm just wondering. You know how? Uh, am I wrong? Is she right? What? Uh, like, how do I tell if maybe uh, it's 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 more of a fetish for me to look for you know what, white males in power over uh, you know subservient ethnic women. So what? I- is your partner? Do you mind if I ask what her ethnic, eth, ethnicity ethnicity is? Well, she she was Filipino. Okay, so you know. Mm-hmm. So, and then she witnessed that your porn feed is all uh, Asian and also Latino. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I don't see. I, again, I, I she was focusing in on the ethnicity. But I like to look for, you know, masseuses mm-hmm. and, uh, and sometimes maids and, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, people who are in trouble, you know, and you're trying to help them out. And uh, I guess that kind of thing. And I, I was just wondering, I don't think I have a, a fetish. I just, you know, that's just what, that, those are fantasies yeah. that I like. Well, you have to differentiate yourself between fetish and kink. So kink is more of something that turns you on, and a fetish is a sexual activity or an object that you cannot get off unless you actually have that thing or object uh, around while uh, you're either being turned on or you're climaxing. So... Like if you were, if you had a foot fetish, like you couldn't actually get turned on or you couldn't orgasm unless you had some type of foot available, available. So you, in a kink is more just something that like this thing turns me on, like you can have several kinks. Uh, it's not so much a fetish if it's just something that turns you on that's not exactly necessary for you to either orgasm or for you to be turned on by it. So you have to differentiate yeah. yourself with that. So what do you feel 
is uh, with with different well, that, people. Well, that's where are, I think she was wrong. You know, it was, a, it was a it was a wide variety of things. It wasn't just one thing. It was, and and I, uh, you know, uh, it, it wasn't necessary for me to like climax. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I sure liked it. When, okay. You know, uh, so I didn't know if you were trying to please a boss or like please a client or. You know, so you you, you basically you get you you get really turned on by having massages by Asians. Is that correct? Like yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. That, that's fine. Um, I mean like, and your partner's Filipino. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess it's this uh, Pacific Islander Filipino. I mean, do you consider your partner? Asian or is it does she turn you on yeah yeah okay so um I guess I'm trying to figure out what your question is more mm-hmm. well I think she was bothered by the fact that you know I almost exclusively don't date white women okay uh, so she bothered I, I by tried, that but I just don't well she I think she noticed a pattern in my previous relationships that she didn't really think was healthy okay but uh but you know i just think that you know i I, i'm more interested in uh something that's not like something that's more exotic okay um and uh and i just personally happen to like the uh the fantasies by which uh the the male is in some kind of like you know Position. So there's there's a fetish um, called yellow fever, and I, I don't really like the term because it seems kind of racist to me. Uh, but that's what's deemed the type of fetish. It, so it's just basically white males who are turned on by Asian women, and it's it's common, and especially with uh, there's been a few. Like with the bus mass shootings here in the U.S., of uh, that there's a, a individual who shot up a, uh, a massage parlor, and mm. that kind of sparked a whole um, uh, movement with the yellow fetish with white men and whatnot. With with basically, you're taking a Asian woman and, and fetishizing over them. Do you feel that's something that you're kind of dealing with right now, or is that not really? Well, I, I, I like other, you know, I like Latinas too. Okay, yeah, you said so that. I don't think that maybe I don't, I don't think that maybe it's exclusive to Asian. Okay, I, I just you know, that's just what I prefer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know if you I, were I don't know this. If that's like, Brad, but we have some people from Australia who are joining us as our se- international sex experts. Uh, Heather oh, and Heath, yes. do you have you had any uh, any dealings with this at all, or is this something that you were have any expertise on? Uh, no, this would have to be a bit of a gray area. <laughs> Um, yeah. Next. Honestly, just yeah, stay happy. You know, love what you love, like what you like. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I don't know. You don't really need to justify it, but it does kind of sound like you have a kink. Mm-hmm. Definitely a kink. Definitely. I wouldn't say. I don't know so much of a fetish. You say that it's a fetish. No, I think you are right there, Chet. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Honest, so it's not me. It was her, right? That's what you're telling. Me. I can. I can go. I can go forward and just, you know, keep keep looking for what I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, well, she yeah, didn't want to participate. So and so that more. involved her some more. I think that might help the situation. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Reach out to your that's partner. Cool. Well, that's, I think that's what the that's what the problem was. I, I we were involving each other more and I had her, you know, look at the kind of pornography I like to look at. And that that didn't seem to make her happy. So you're saying that you want to involve her more in your actual... Oh, no, no. Well, maybe, uh, I think maybe this got lost. That's done. She's gone. 
Oh, she's oh, not involved in your relationship part. anymore. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. But she, she, you know, she told me I, I was fetishizing her and uh, and and all my past relationships, and uh, I, I just didn't, I didn't think so. So I, I, that's why I'm calling in to see is it is it really me or uh, was I, uh, you know, uh, was I fetishizing these these women? Uh, I didn't think I was either, so thank you. <laughs> okay. You're just like, I didn't do it either, so thank you. Uh, I I really hope that you um, come to some type of balance here. Like, you seem like you are at some type of standstill with whether it's okay to like these uh, different ethnicities. Like... Attraction comes in a myriad of ways. Like you can't control it, and it's it's okay just to accept it. I mean, I'm attracted to Diane. She's beautiful, blonde hair. I I I really I, I'm attracted to petite women with big breasts and nice asses. I I don't know why. <laughs> That's just me. Mm-hmm. Like some people like tall women, some people like short women. Um, uh, you seem to be somebody like who enjoys Asian or Latino women, and it's just what you're attracted to. So it's I guess we got to figure out like what separates race from just being a your attraction is skin tone. Do you feel that skin tone is something that's attractive? Like there are women like Diane and I, we watch the Miss America, Miss, no Miss universe. Miss universe. Pardon me. And there are just some really beautiful women on Miss universe. Mm -hmm. Um, All ethnicities. Yeah. All ethnicities from everywhere. Um, there's something about like the olive skin, the brown skin, the dark skin. That's just like, it's just the skin alone is very, very attractive, very beautiful. Um, you know, women tend like their, the body features from different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, everyone is beautiful in their own way. You just got to accept that. You just got to be appreciative of that. Um, if that's something that you're into, I, I wouldn't say to be ashamed of it. Like, you like what you like. Yeah. You like what you like, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when we're, we're, like, role-playing and stuff, it's okay for me to be like, you know, act like you're the maid and you broke something. So you, and you're basically... you're afraid to get in trouble. You want to put these, these, these women in scenarios where it's very, like... Uh, like a racial stereotype. I think is he's that talking about more boss and servant type? Or it's more of like a BDSM oh, type yeah, of scenario, I... like a, like, a yeah, dom, like a dom and submissive, submissive type of scenario. There, a secretary That's, boss. Oh, yeah, that can go a lot of different ways. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to do anything with race or mm-hmm. ethnicity there. Yeah, yeah, but I like the details in the role play to be a little more. I don't know. You know what's uh, what really happens. Uh, you know that kind of. Thing. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I hope we steered you in the right direction. Did you? I think you did. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, Heath and Gretchen, do you have any type of final thoughts for Mister uh, Brad here? I like to make your own videos. Wait, so you want him to oh. make his own videos? Yeah. I think that the next time, since you broke up with this one girl, you should just talk to them and say, what do you feel about being a maid? And I'm going to mm-hmm. make a yes. porn, Sexy. perhaps. Mm-hmm. And then okay. she won't object when you're watching it, because if you're down and can watch that, mm-hmm. for example, you might find mm-hmm. that your next lady's a, a little bit more flattered. Okay. Yeah, that's a, I think. That sounds like some mm-hmm. standard I think, Yeah. yeah. I think I'll try that. All right. Well, I hope you had a, uh, I hope we answered your question, my friend, and I hope you stay sex positive. Yeah. Have a good night. Stay safe. And Thank safe you. And you have a good night. All right, Brad, have a good night. 
Thank you so much. Um, All right. Heath and Gretchen, have you guys ever made a sex tape before? For sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 All the time. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple. We have a flashcard where we uh, we just like, well, we're just going to pick up where we left off and we just put it in the camera and we just go ahead and mm-hmm. just film ourselves. And so I think, I don't know, it's fun. We don't really watch it's much. It's not a bad approach. No. Well, I like that approach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what, uh, what's your medium for making sex tapes? Well, I, I get a little pedantic about it. I write the scripts. Oh, oh nice. you actually go through and you 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 do a whole yeah, yeah, on yeah. like uh, like the pizza man and you put your penis yeah, yeah, in a, yeah, a yeah, pizza yeah. box and yeah yeah, yeah. my, my favorite's the pool cleaner. Wow, oh. we we have not yeah. gone we down that, that route. Creative. We're no. just improvising. We just like we just go ahead and actually just turn on the camera and just start having sex. Yeah, so we don't have a whole script. Right, we need it. to boost up our game uh, we need to make our projection yeah. a i, I like that rawness of it too that, that yeah. brings that brings a new flavor to it yeah I'm, it's I'm it's always it's curious though it's just like do i want this on tape like what i'm it's what not would, connected to the internet to so. yeah it, well, we <laughs> always make sure that we don't connect to the internet at all uh when any device that we're recording um wells do we have yes. any type of, uh, do we have any questions coming in at all or what's going on with the feed? We do not. We do not. <laughs> we do not. not. Um, do you have any type of statistics for, uh, it was a heavy topic with the whole racial, it's always It's always uh, a heavy topic with racial Because uh, it's question. tied so closely to colonialism. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. A lot of these fetishes are about uh, the white gaze and, and finding a woman who's more submissive mm-hmm. uh, as a general stereotype. And then, of course, it goes the reverse way with black men where they're hypersexualized. Really? Yes. Right. And there's a, a big scandal in porn for years where uh, white female performers will charge more to do interracial scenes with men black men and in, in the porn industry in the porn industry wow it's something huh. i did not know of yeah um, racism in the porn industry huh like inner interracial type of uh sex scenes in the porn that's interesting um yeah and there's actually a let me look up the name for the black male stereotype there that is discussed there there's a name for the type of actual black man uh mandingo oh yes type of black man yes that the, is. these scenes are, are constructed a certain way the black men act a certain way mm-hmm. in these pornographic scenes that's mm-hmm. stereotypical mm-hmm. another example of racism and pornography Man, i've heard of the mandingo that is uh i haven't really uh mm-hmm. i think they no. touch on that on the uh Django Unchained oh, the movie I did see that movie yeah, yeah. I don't know about um that what uh Heath and Gretchen you uh-huh. you you were uh chiming in there have you heard something about that or no no <laughs> no, no very very News, very yeah. intrigued about that oh, cool. yeah we're interested <laughs> yeah um yeah I've heard of the Mandingo um but um I just dropped my mouse. That's what happens. Um, Actually, that uh, the stereotype of black men having extremely large genitals that was created with the Mandingo mm. um, to make them seem uncivilized and animalistic. And studies about penis sizes with with race, that stereotype has actually not been confirmed. The results have been inconclusive. And now it's just more of like a fetish, like or, or just like I, I feel like it's more of a badge of honor, you know, and just like, hey, you know what? My race has a large penis, so why not? Got just that play swag it up? going on. Got that swag, that big mm-hmm. dick swag. Mm-hmm. Uh Heath and Gretchen, you talk about big dick swag quite a bit uh, in your show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh so Pete Davidson, of course, is Probably has a big dick. Uh, seems like it. Yeah, it seems like it. Big dick PD. Big dick yeah, PD. Yeah, I could see yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that he... Uh... If you're getting people writing um, songs about the size of your penis, I think it, it carries a little bit of weight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. No pun intended. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I like to say that uh, that uh, a, a goldie cock, a good old goldie cock, it's not 
too big. It's not too small. It's just a goldie cock. It's right in the middle. So I don't it's know. not. That's safe. Yeah, yeah. it's safe. Right yeah. in the middle. That's, that's yeah. approachable. And yeah. why not? Why not? So, um, well, we've had a fun time, guys. We really have. Uh, Heather, uh, God damn it, I knew. Okay. <laughs> Heathen down under. <laughs> Every time I see the name Heathen, I want to say Heather. It looks like it. It it's looks close, like yeah. it. Uh, Gretchen <laughs> and Heath, thank you so much mm-hmm. for joining us. It has been a very fun time. Uh, please tune in to their show. They do it weekly podcast. Uh, you can see their dogs in the background. They do say quite a they bit. They do make appearance right here. Is, is, <laughs> is your dog still depressed? I, I heard this and I was He's really concerned about your dog. <laughs> He's yeah, depressed. He's, he's a little bit depressed. I don't know if there's any animal antidepressants, but I feel that uh, I, I you guys are doing a good job. Um, and the, do- the door is the just door. opening <laughs> right open there. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> let himself in. Yeah, yeah they just come and go. In. We have three of them. So oh, very nice. House. Very yeah. nice. Uh, we have cats that tend to come into this room, and uh, except for in a our parlor right now of course mm-hmm. um but they do uh chew on food and we try to get them out of here but anyways thank you so much for joining us i do... it has been a pleasure guys thank yes, you for thank having you us um, yeah but uh we're gonna go ahead and end it there uh stay safe sane and consensual as always and please if you're listening to this go ahead and give us a like or stars or whatever the hell you're listening to just whatever it is to make us uh you know feel good about ourselves because it's a fun show also listen to heathen down under it is a fun fun podcast Mm -hmm. that talks about uh sex in their lifestyle and also the australian culture which i feel is very fascinating but we're gonna go ahead and end it tonight right now uh have a very fun 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 time stay safe out there guys thank you so much thank you very much